Hello, today I'm going to be covering Excel tips that you can use to elevate how you use Excel for financial analysis. I'm going to be covering the functions and where to use them, starting from removing duplicates, how to split up values using the text to column function, data validation to create a dropdown, freezing panes to view information better, and then lastly, selecting ranges efficiently to capture new information. Starting with removing duplicates, this is a very important function in Excel because when you conduct analysis, you are often analyzing a unique set of data. In this case, we need to capture the total gross amount by the vendor. And to get a unique list of the vendor, the most efficient approach is to remove duplicates. The easiest way is to simply use the unique function, which will return the unique values within the selected range. However, you can also do this manually by first copying the list of the data that you want to remove duplicates for, paste the values, and then select the data. And then under the data tab within the data tools group, select the remove duplicates function. Because we've already selected the range that we want to remove duplicates for, I'm just going to click continue with the current selection and then press remove duplicates. It mentions only 10 unique values remain and you now have a unique list of all the vendors from this data set. From here, you can capture the gross amount by using the sumis function, like this. When you're analyzing data, you will often find yourself having to generate this unique list of data to analyze, and the best way to do it is by using the remove duplicates function. The next function we're going to cover is the text to column function. This will help split up data that is in one cell to multiple columns. This is particularly helpful when the data is not clean and you have multiple data sitting in one location. Let's learn this function by going over the question where we need to capture the total amount by the project. It also mentioned that project and division is combined with the character hyphen. And by using the text to column function, we can split up the project name and the division into two separate cells. First, copy the set of data that you want to split into the location that you want to split in, and then select the data again, and go into the data tab, and under the data tools group, select the text to columns function. You have two options, either fixed width or delimited. Select the delimited function, and then press next, and then you can select a delimiter. A delimiter is simply a character that is used to identify how you want to split the data. We know that the project and division is combined with a hyphen, so we can press other and uncheck tab and then specify the character of a hyphen. And you'll notice in the data preview, it splits up the project name and the division into two separate columns. If there's any other character that you want to split the data by, you can always select other and then specify the character or select one of the preset settings above. But in this case, I want to split by a hyphen. So I'll press next and then just press finish. And I now have the project name and the division in two separate columns. Now to capture the total amount by the project, let's copy the data of project name, paste the values, remove duplicates, continue with the current selection, and I now have the unique list of projects. And I can just use the sum as function. Anytime you need to split up data that is in one cell into multiple cells, one of the best ways is to use the text to column function. The third function is the data validation function. Creating a dropdown in Excel is very useful because it guarantees that that specific cell has a value that you need. In this case, we have an income statement. And if we were to remove this date data, let's just put a random text, it returns an error. So I know that this value needs to be one of the dates specified within this table. To guarantee that, I can create a dropdown list so that you could only select one of the values available here. Let's go over how to create a dropdown by addressing the question where we need to create a data validation in cell C8 to toggle between the different dates available here. To create a data validation, again, go to the data tab and under the data tools group, select data validation function over here. Because I currently have the cell C8 selected, any data validation setting that I select will be applied to cell C8. Now under the allow dropdown, I'm going to select list and within the source section, I'm going to specify the dates that I want to be available to select. 
I'm then going to press OK. And now cell C8 will only allow you to select one of the dates amongst the options presented here. So if I select August, it will return August financials. And if I select December, it will return December financials. If I try to replace the value that is not amongst the selection, it will return an error saying this value does not match the data validations restrictions. And then if I just close it, it will go back to the previous value. So this will guarantee that this financial statement over here will always bring in a value from this table by making sure that you could only select one of the dates available within this list here. The data validation function is very useful and it also sort of makes your worksheet look a little bit more professional. The next function is the freezing panes function. When you're analyzing large data like this and you're going all the way to the right, you sometimes lose track of what data you're exactly seeing. For example, this 3260 over here, I'm not exactly sure what financial item this actually relates to because I can't see the header over here. What I want to do here is I want to freeze column B and also up to row five so that I could see the financial item and the date while I'm reviewing the data presented here. To do this, I will be using a function called freezing panes available within the view tab under the window group selected over here. The most common option is to use the freeze panes. And what this will do is it will freeze right before the column and the row of where your cell is selected. So right now I have cell C6 selected. And if I freeze panes, it will freeze up to column B, which is right before column C and up to row five, which is right before row six. So then when I scroll to the right, I still have visibility into the financial item. And if I scroll down, I still have visibility into what period I'm actually looking at. Whenever you're working with large spreadsheets, the freezing pain function is a very useful tool for you to use to make reviewing information much easier. Last, let's go over selecting ranges more efficiently. For this question, we need to create a dropdown for the entity in cell C7 and then capture the headcounts by division. Later, add the two new divisions found at the bottom into the table. So we have a table with the different entities and the different divisions. And later on, we need to add the headcount related to quality control and sales after we've set up our formula. Now let's first create a data validation selecting the entities. So we will go back to data, data validation. Let's select list. And then our source is going to be this list of entities over here. Let's press OK. And then let's just select one entity, for example. Now to capture the headcount, because we have to assess both the row and the column, let's use the index match function. Now, when we're selecting the data that we want to return, normally what you will do is select all the available data here. However, this is not an efficient approach. Let's first finish the formula. So we have our headcount. And the reason why selecting the range of the existing data is not efficient is because when you add new data into your table, it will not be captured in your formula because you only selected the existing data. So if we add quality control and sales into this analysis here, it will just return an error because it's not selecting the new data. What I recommend is to always go one row or one column beyond the data that you're analyzing. So let's delete this formula and set up our index match again. And rather than just selecting this existing data, I'm going to select one more column. So instead of ending in column O, I'm going to select up to column P and also one more row. So instead of row 13, I'll select up to row 14 and then match the division. And again, I'm also selecting one more row of the divisions and then match the entity where we're selecting one more column. Now, next, what I would do is I would indicate that this is the end of my range by creating a color block. And I will also do the same for here as well, because I know that this is the end of my data range. I am going to insert two cells down and then I would add my divisions over here. Now what happens when I drag this formula down is that it also captures quality control and sales. And the reason for that is because before I added my two rows here, my formula is selecting up to row 14. And when I insert rows between 14 and 13, my data range actually expands up to row 16 because I've added cells somewhere in the middle of my data range. And then naturally 
once I've added these two new divisions here, it will also automatically be captured within my formula. And because I have a black color coding to let me know that this is the end of my data range, anytime I need to add more new divisions, I would continue to insert cells somewhere in the middle of my data range, allowing my formula to constantly update to capture new information. This is very helpful because your financial models will always continue to change and sometimes you might forget that you have to update a formula to capture new information. However, by selecting the range beyond the existing data, you're able to guarantee that you will always catch new information without fail. And these are the five Excel tips that I wanted to share to elevate how you use Excel more efficiently. This file will be available on my website for you to practice and I highly recommend for you to do so because these are very useful skill sets. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out and I hope this video was able to help you. Thank you.